So we are going to go in three, two, one. Lions Lounge Lockdown, episode 20. Big Byron Webster. How are you, mate? Not bad. You all good? All good, mate. Thanks for joining us. Um, Millwall player, 2014 to 2019. Usually we always start, obviously, and just finish with Millwall careers, but looking through your career, I wanted to talk about a couple of other things. Obviously, came through the ranks at York um, and then ended up at non-league Harrogate. And then after that, talk us through what your next step in your career was. Yeah, so I, um, when I was at York, I was in the first team at 17. And like every youngster, I thought I cracked it. So um, playing, enjoying, didn't think much of it. And the manager came in who, he, liked, so he was a tosser, an absolute clown the guy was. Um, and we just didn't get on. Even at that age, 17, he was just a bully. And I thought I was mentally strong and what, yeah, not a problem. And he just shot my confidence to bits. So um, I kind of just like quit football. My dad were on me saying, don't quit, don't quit, stick with it. So like I said, I went to Harrogate, played a couple of games and then the season finished. So I went on holiday um, and an agent rang my dad somehow. And the chance went to go over uh, the Czech Republic. And because I weren't really bothered, there was nothing to lose. Went over there and... The rest is history. Loved every minute of it and fell back in love with football. That's a random move, isn't it? From from Harrogate to Czech to the Czech Republic. Mental, honestly. And it <laughs> it's a crazy place as well. So like Prague is a beautiful city, like really nice, like just like London normal. Love yeah. to talk about that. Where I was out in the sticks, man. <laughs> it was uh, it was different, we'll say. What was the language barrier like for you over there? You obviously couldn't speak a word. So we had um, a tutor who'd come in, um, so it was about two, three times a week, you had, to, you had to do it. So like little things now, it's funny because like when a year it came, like you'd pick up like swear words really, and like <laughs> little things, so like man on left, right, things like that. So I could, I could understand more than I could say. Um, and like when I was at Yeovil as well, there was a check keeper there, so... Yeah, little words I know, but I'm a northerner. It's hard to, it's hard to speak English. Now, man. <laughs> Would you open Yuri Skalak out and you have a few uh, translations or explain to the manager what Yuri had just called him under his breath? Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, to be fair, the gaffer didn't really know when we were there. Otherwise, he'd, yeah, he'd been quizzing me saying, what's Yuri just called me? So, um, but no, uh, it was funny because Yuri would say like a Czech swear word and none of the lads would know and I'd be like, yeah, he's just called you a twat. <laughs> Oh, mate, brilliant. And then, obviously, you come back to England. It's been a long, uh, long old career so far. It's still, it's still going, but we'll get on to that later. Come back to England, eventually working your way south, Doncaster, Northampton, and then Yeovil. You can see the shirt behind you. Um, some good times at Yeovil as well. Yeah, we I enjoyed my time out in the Czech Republic. We were playing in the top league against, like, well, teams that were playing in the Champions League, Sparta Prague, Slavia Prague. So there were good, good times. It was just... Boredom setting, so I, I want. I was dying to. Once I fell back in love with football, I just wanted to get back home. Um, so he's just trying to get a chance to get back home, and um, it's kind of a cheeky one that the club knew I wanted to leave, so they have a winter break. So in the winter break, I, I nearly signed up Motherwell, um, and I got the chance to go and train at Doncaster, and then um, Sean O'Driscoll um, signed me. I think they paid. Lucas in and the Mars bar for us, got us back into England. And then, Do you know, I'm just, pop, I'm just popping home for Christmas, boys. I'm yeah, back. exactly. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, so then got back into England and then, yeah, it's been it's been, it's been good since. Obviously, Yeovil had the promotion, went to Millwall promotion, so all good. So you left the Yeovil for me on a free transfer. Yeovil offered you a new contract, but they'd been relegated for the championship at the time. So you wanted to obviously keep in the championship. That didn't work out because you got relegated anyway. But... So Ian Holloway signed you, would have signed you. Uh, it was funny, the first meet, so I met, met uh, Mick Harford to start off with. Um, met him, spoke to him, was speak, obviously brassing myself around, speaking to a few other clubs and whatever else. Uh, met Mick and then met Ian Holloway the first time on my own. And the second time I was actually going um, to a wedding. Um, so my missus were with me, so she was she came along with us. So um, I'm there speaking to Ian Holloway, and Ian Holloway's wife grabbed all my missus and interrogating her as well. So we were both having an interview, 
getting done. And to be fair, as soon as we left to, to drive further on, my missus said, you're going to have to sign them. He, he sold us a world. <laughs> like, um, we were off to the premiership that time. So, um, oh, really? Uh, so, yeah. So, he, like, he, obviously, Millwall don't speak very highly of him, but he had, he had good intentions, but mm. he wanted to change everything quick. And, <laughs> yeah, he wanted to flip the club, and he, he didn't need that. He needed bit by bit, and uh, obviously, it went against him. We did make some good signings, as well as you. Lee Gregory came to the club as well. Yeah, that's um, what I mean. Do you know what? He's one of the, up with uh, Sean O'Driscoll as well. He's one of the most tactically like savvy uh, managers I've worked under. He, he, really? did, he, he knew he knew what he wanted to. But like I say, I'm a Man United fan, and when David Moyes went into Man U, he tried to change everything. He tried to change the the DNA of the club, and that's what I think Ian Holloway tried to do. And it just like it just back, backfired on him massively. Yeah, so you like? Do you like him then, Holloway? He was good for you. Um, obviously, oh, I, went, I, I went on loan, so I didn't see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, what, like I don't, I couldn't say a bad thing against him if I'm honest. No, I couldn't say a bad thing against him. He was honest. Like I say, he knew his stuff. Um, I just think what you see of him on TV and on the touchline is how he is every single day. He is. Passionate, intense guy, and I just think sometimes you need to be able to, especially as a manager, you need to be able to take your foot off the pedal and and, and chill out. And I think the lads, the lads feed into that. That's why the gaffer chopper, he was intense, but he could also you could also sit down and have a coffee with him and a, a chill out a conversation with him. Mm. With Ian Holloway would be climbing the walls and. and so it's on. not it's not it's not an act with him. Then he is literally like that twenty four seven. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, like I say, I can say about there's not a bad thing I could say about him. Well, we'll try. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I tell you, so yeah, like you said, you signed for the club. I usually ask people their debut. Now, if the records are correct, your debut wasn't a, wasn't a massive game. Was it the, a Wickham um, Carling Cup match or Coca Cola Cup? Possibly. I can't. I can't even tell you. Mm. Yeah. And you didn't really get much of a sniff. You say so you end up back on only uh, Yeovil. What happened there? So. It was kind. Of, it was one of them weird ones where there was a. How I thought it was going to go was me and Bees were going to play. That was mm. the way I saw it. But we had um, obviously Dunny in, uh, Shitu in, and it was kind of like just a rotation thing. And it was one of them that it didn't matter. Or what way I believe it didn't matter if either of us or any of us, the four of us, if we scored a hat trick one game, I think he already had his in his head who were playing the next game. Mm. So it was just one of them. I couldn't get consistency, and and yeah, you just uh, maybe looking back at it, I think like a few times I were a scapegoat for it. Like it was an easy one, or Byron's done bad. When really looking back, I didn't really do all bad. I just didn't get a run of games and didn't get a chance. No, you didn't get a run of games at all, did you? What's yeah. your first impressions of the club, uh, despite Holloway? Do you know what? I always said. Uh, so I had another running with a manager, what mention his name. So there's only two. It sounds like I've had runnings with a few managers, but there's only two. But he was a northerner and um he'd been down south a lot. Up north we're straight back as we tell them how it is. And we always say down south they don't take, they always skirt around it. But Millwall fans, they tell you how it is as a club, throughout the whole club. And that's what I liked. Like there was no you just knew where you stood throughout throughout everything. Everyone who was involved with the club, the fans. And yeah, nowadays, I said it in another interview, social media is a devil because people can write so much rubbish and hype you up and you don't even know them from anything. <laughs> you do something bad at a Millwall game, the fans will come you and tell you afterwards. But also, in a way, if you do something great, they're the first to tell you. And that, that's what I like. I don't like bullshit or slyness and there's none of that at me. Well, this is like, it's funny you should say that because this is episode 20 and the previous 19 episodes we did the class of 2000 when Neil Harris played and I've done the 90s. So I did think this today, it's not really a question I've been able to ask. The the impact, obviously the era you're in now, the, the impact of social media on players and, and uh, you know, I don't th want it. Th things the idiots like me say, you know, can, can that affect people and players? I think it does. Do you know what? My thing is that I don't go on it a lot. I'm not on Twitter or any of that, mainly because you react to someone, you get fined for it, so there's no point. It's I'm like the PFL do you. You go into a restaurant and you, you know, 
the chef or whoever's cooking you a meal and it's rubbish and you go, your meal's blah, blah, it's rubbish, you're swearing at him, you get turfed out. Like, a fan can go to a game, slaughter you, doesn't know you, and he's accepted, I'm like, right, how can that be right? But, um, but yeah, they'll say, you know, they're there, but it, that's the funny thing about social media, they might not even be at the game, they're not mm. even at the game, and they're slaughtering you. Like, come on, man. So, I keep myself away from it, and, yeah, like I say, if someone's got a problem with you, they tell you, especially at Millwall games, they tell you after the game, come on, what's happening? So it must have been a very difficult situation. You've come to the club. Holloway's promised you the earth. His missus has promised your missus the earth. Then yeah. you end up back at Yeovil. And then what's your train of thought next? Obviously, you come to Millwall for championship football. We're in the relegation zone. You must have been hearing whispers, you know, Holloway could be losing his job. Are you thinking, ah, do I need to get back to Millwall? Do I need to get looking elsewhere? But ah, what's, when you're hundreds of miles by the other end of the phone, what's, what's going through your head? I remember speaking to my dad thinking he's going to get the bullet here and I'm out of the window like what happens if someone gets it and I'm going to be at the back of the queue and my dad's always and my agents are the ones I always speak to and they're like just just take every day you can't do anything you can't it's out of your hands so what will be will be um, but to be fair to the gaffer chopper he, um, he rang me in the summer and says <laughs> in a nutshell you ain't going anywhere um, and you're in my plan so that was the end of it so, yes, yeah, so obviously Holloway gets the sack. Um, are you speaking to other players, like ringing Gregors up, going, what's going, Gregors, what's going on down here? Like, is he, is he, yeah. <laughs> stop scoring gold. <laughs> <laughs> so intense and, like, I don't, like I said, the lads, if you, I bet if you ask, like, 99% of them won't have a bad word to say about it. But it was just, I think the more the pressure built, the crazier he got. Um, and, and, yeah, it was just... He's a character. He's a character. We'll say that. Yeah. So, character, character. so Neil Harris gets a job. He say he put the call into you and, and sort of told you exactly what you wanted to hear. You're going to be sort of yeah. in, in, in the reckoning. So you come back to the club and then you start. That's when things start to get get good for us. First season back in the champ. One. Uh, sorry. First season back in League One. One of Neil Harris's first jobs is to re-sign someone you become very close to at the club. Your personal chef. But those who uh, are not on Instagram. That's Steve Morrison. <laughs> he loves it, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Morrow, he was um, he's a, he was a big name, obviously a big name for Millwall fans. But like for me, who didn't really know a lot about Millwall, I, I've seen Morrow play in the Premiership. You know, I've seen him terrorise John Terry and playing for Wales and things like that. So it was a big boost for everyone. Um, and I think Greg's will be the first one to say like it helped Greg's. It took the pressure off him because. Morrow's got broad shoulders. He, he cannot score for five, six games, and he really ain't asked as long as the team's winning. Whereas Greg's had won, Greg's Greg's was a or is a confident strike, uh, a confident striker. He needs the goals, and when he's scoring, you know, he's he's unplayable. But um, yeah, it, looking back now, he was massive, not just on the pitch but off it as well, um, because. People say he's grumpy, he's grumpy, like, but um, he would tell the lads. And at that time, there were a lot of young lads as well. So he was, he, you know, when they needed to kick up the arse, he'd be more or less the one to do it. Um, and it showed, obviously, he, he got, well, helped us get to the final against Barnsley and then, and then won it against Bradford. So, yeah, well, I don't know why, I just got the feeling that it was, you probably all didn't, but you, Gregors, Beavers, Taylor. It was quite a like heavy northern influence there. And I just got a feeling that you all, you know, were quite a close knit group. I know good results helps that. It, yeah, it, it's an, it's a cliche. You know, we get on off the pitch and blah blah blah. We did. We had a right that. It was. Um, and do you know what it was? I think because, like you said, the results were good, um, and the gaffer um, new to it, he kind of gave us license. So we we managed ourselves, like in training. Don't get me wrong; he'd be there and he'd nail us when things weren't going right, but. We set our own standards and we had players who could do it, but there was a good laugh. Throughout my whole time, there was a good laugh there. Um, and it was good that there, there was little clicks, Northerners, obviously the younger lads, the senior lads, but we could all blend in. We could all, you know, get involved. Like there was Aid and Fred Marlon, them three flaming together, just being nuggets. Then there was like the Northerners and the golfers and whatever else. And it, it was good. And, I think that could tell on the pitch that we all we all backed each other, yeah. um, and that was 
you know, the gaffer when he first came in, he said, listen, you don't need to be the most talented player to play in front of Millwall fans. Just give your all, and I promise you, they will back you to the hill. And, and it was true. You know, there was times where we were crap, but we'd give our all and we need to win. And it was, you know, that was as good as seeing good football. You know, they didn't care. They'd rather us give our all, win, than be fantastic on the eye. And, you know, you see the laziness, the sloppiness. And so, so we mm. knew what to do. And he sounds stupid because we were only young lads then. But there was Sid there. There was Tomo there. There were Millwall through and through. Yeah. And Doug, they, they took some hammering. <laughs> They'd be like, come on, man, what are you doing? Like, kissing the bad shake and you know, all that lot. And when the gaffer walking by, you see Tomo getting like hot, like flustered, thinking he's like his little child or whatever that's else. Funny. But it was, but they, that's what you needed um, because they kind of told this, of, say, the Northerners, for instance, what it meant. Um, and it did. And then, like I said, my kids today, I say, oh, I'm doing an interview today. My little boy's straight away got me got his Millwall kit on. He's the only guy in Yorkshire. Leeds are doing well. What a bad year. Leeds are doing well and Liverpool have won the league. What a bad year. And he's the only <laughs> kid around our streets wearing a Millwall kit with all the Leeds fans. So it's oh, not cool. just me that it's a change or affected my life. It's the rest of the family that, that enjoy it as well. Yeah, you sound about youngsters there in the dressing room. I was going to ask you about one in particular because it did seem you, you did and still do have a very good relationship with him. I heard you was more of a, a PA for him, really, because he couldn't do things for himself. I didn't know Brian. So Morrow was my chef. I was Aidan's chef, secretary, like everything for him. But nah, he's a good guy. He's um, he's just he, another honest guy who um, who has done so well for himself. And where he's come from to where he is now, you know, it's massive credit to him. And yeah, I get on with him it's like so so well. Can't speak out enough of him. And in the first side, first season, we nearly we nearly get uh, promoted the first attempt. We the playoffs. You missed you missed the final, didn't you? But before that, let's talk about the uh, the build up. Bradford away. That was that was still for me in recent times one of the best. That that forty five minutes after we conceded, what what display that was. The atmosphere. Obviously, they had the. Um... They get good crowds anyway, so they'd pack their end out, our end were packed out, and like you say, I think it was Joe Martin who gave the penalty away. And, yeah. Paul, maybe. and then you're thinking, shit, we're like, warm day as well it was. We're going to be under the cosh here. And then, I think did Joe Martin put in the top, someone's got a free kick, I think it was. Joe Martin. Joe Martin, yeah, and then Morrow. Greg, Greg, Greg has got the first one. Yeah. And then uh, Morrow put Edda from the corner, and then Joe Martin. Tipped yeah. it off before half time, four goals in the first half. Yeah, and like, that's probably one of that and the, the the second leg at the den are the two that I remember. Um, they were, yeah, fantastic games. Like, I remember going on the bus back thinking we're there. Like, there was no way we was losing at the den at all. Um, they could have had 15 men. They, they were just never, ever beat. They were never beating us up there. No, it's a, then again, that's a brilliant, brilliant night. So, what point? I, I, I've obviously forgotten this, um, but you didn't play the final in, through injury, obviously. So the I remember the board going up at the den. I tweaked my hammy. There was like about I want to say it was like the ninety first minute. So I came off then, had all the treatment, thinking it was fine. Um, did the warm up for the final, and the last sprint felt my hamstring go. Um, so that's when the gap for you. I don't know if you're still allowed to do it now, but they were able to make the sub. So TC came in um, for me. Um, yeah, so then I was I was like injured in the warm up, not able to do it. Oh, cool! No, that's what I do remember now. You got injured in the warm up. Yeah. Oh, and Tony Craig played centre off. Yeah, he's fucking turning him down in about ten minutes, wasn't he? Not it wasn't Tony Craig's fault, but uh, we had a lot of injuries that day. I think Aidan O'Brien come on left back actually as well. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't remember. I just remember thinking, shit, this is. Bad, bad day, and I remember going back in the change room. And to be fair, it was Ford who came up to me, got me around the the neck, and said, "Listen, I know you're disappointed. Get your head up, and let's get the lads through it." And I thought, Do you know what? You're right. It's not just about me. This it's about getting the lads through it. Um, and then obviously it, it weren't the best day, but um, I remember. Yeah, we went two 0 down, and numbed up Steve scored. Then he scored, and I'm thinking, decent. We're getting back in this. Yeah. The smallest guy on the pitch for them scored the header, so. Yeah, crap there in the end. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a double bad day for you. You end up not playing. Obviously, you've done it before and won it with Yeovil, but 
to uh, to miss out on that day on the day must have been terrible for you. Yeah, it was a nightmare. Like I, I remember, uh, I'm sat there and this geezer comes up to me. Oh, do you want to do an interview? I'm thinking, mate, do one. I cannot be asked speaking to you. So I said, no, it's all right. Uh, then my dad came running down. You know who that is? That's the moose. <laughs> so I was disrespectful <laughs> to the moose. Like my dad buzzes off him from listening to talk sport. So then, hi hey, moose, you all right? And I'm thinking. <laughs> Last person I wanted to do was do an interview with anyone, but um, it was a rubbish day, and then just went on. But like, so thankfully, next season we were back, so it was mm. all right. Did the gaffer say that afterwards in the dressing room? What was his sort of team talk after the game? More or less that, you know. We've, um, I'm not saying we weren't expected the first year, but there weren't mm. much pressure on us. The second year is like he said, he more or less said to us, "Look, we have to do it next year." So we'd already put pressure on ourselves to do it. Mm. Uh, I think which was why it was extra special. It was um, it was good to yeah to get the season going. And even like the like the last we're at Bristol Rovers we played and Hutch got the header. So it was the last minute again that we made it. But it's one of them ones that we were never losing that again. So yeah, well let's, well, let's get on to it. The 2016-2017 season. Uh, Mark Beavers leaves the club. And you get a couple of um, allies. Uh, Sean Hutchinson comes into the club. Yeah. Jake Cooper comes in on loan as well at some point. But I've yeah. got a feeling that you was always sort of Beavis' right-hand man. And then after he left, that's when you sort of became the main man. You know, he's always in there, in there or thereabouts when you're in the starting lineup. Yeah, big Beavis left for... Um, and yeah. then um, I was just laughing because he was never getting paid on time. So I was buzzing. I was like, yeah, you've left thinking you're clever going back up north, but you're playing for free, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> he went to shit oh, yeah. for that Bolton, but yeah, they, uh, he leaves the club and um, say Sean Hutchinson comes in, still a, yeah. still a big mill player now, and Cooper. Yeah, what was so that? Um, Hutch had a few injuries to start off with. Um, I can't remember who I played. Really. Um, I'm not sure that's why they got Cooper in on Cooper in on loan. Um, but then, like, like he got over his injuries. To be fair, and then he was massive for us at the the back end of it. Um, Scored the winning header, uh, like Terry Butcher with it, bandaged up, I think he was that game. Um, and then, yeah, a big part of it. And like you said, he's done so, so well since. Yeah, we sort of, he kept, he didn't really have to buy any plans either, Harris, did he? So he bought those two in, Cooper on loan, Hutchinson on a free. But other than that, it's pretty much the same squad. The the, uh, the front two, the deadly duo, were firing on all cylinders. But not only do we get to the plus, we have, we have a very good cup run as well. Let's exactly. talk about that cup run. Cup run was the best. Like, I remember watching it, you'd be thinking, like, you have a man you away at Old Trafford or like a big game like that or anyone at the den. And when the big teams had gone and then you think, thinking, right, let's get them at the den. And when they did, it, it was a great run. Leicester, the champions at that time, Dom, Watford, Bournemouth. Yeah. Uh, yeah and then got his ass he's held against Tottenham like <laughs> <laughs> this took well, a test to go because it was down to 10 men as well Cooper gets sent off and that's when I was thinking this should just get to a replay now yeah was that was that Leicester? that was Leicester yeah and then Sean Cummings pops up scores yeah, the winner what was he like Sean Cummings? one of the most laid back people I've ever come across he uh, in fact Marlon's no better Marlon's so killed he's just they're just great lads Great, great lads, but yeah, they're just, they're just, yeah, just so chill. I've never met two lads um, that are just, I don't want to say not bothered, because they are bothered, but they're just relaxed as all, and whatever happens, happens, and then they keep going, but but yeah, great lads. Like I say, we didn't have a bad egg in that team. Yeah. Uh, not a bad one at all. Um, and, and to be fair, if we did, someone would have told them and they'd have to straighten out or... All of them been shipped out, so the gaff won't have allowed it. Was it like uh, like day to day in the, in the tra- training ground with Harris and the boys and that? Look, looks like a lot of fun from the outside looking in. Yeah, there was fair to start off with. It was like like you said, the, the Northerners, me, Beeves, Greg, fair Lee Martin at the time as well. He were involved in a few things, and then when Beeves and Tails left, me and Greg's just childs, just children, just children called in havoc in the changing room. Physios, areas, blaming. We were nice to the ladies in the office. They were, they were, they were all. We, we needed them. They always looked after us. But everyone else were, were fair game. 
So was you living down there at this point? Because uh, there was one point when you was was Morris in the stand with you. I couldn't work out what was going on. Yeah, Morrow were a tight ass on one pair for Dig, so he was just living with me. Uh, no, so yeah, so south with um, the missus and kids was down with us, so we, we were living together. And then I thought I thought I was moving to somewhere else, so thought right then save a bit of rent because it's a fortune down in London. Made the decision to move the family back up north. Plus, my little girl was having to go to school, so we needed to kind of get a base. Um, the move thing happened, so. So yeah, me and Morrow moved in together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so you were yeah. leaving me at one point? There were, there were a chance, yeah. There were a chance. I'd have been in the Prem now with the team. Oh, really? Yeah. Fair enough. Not a rocket science team, yeah. Check you. <laughs> I, thought I, was, I thought there was a chance there. Um, but yet again, Neil Harris says, you ain't going anywhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> fair enough. But... Um, so yeah, so so yeah, and then me and Morrow lived together since then. Oh, fair enough. Because I always used to see on Instagram story, I couldn't work out what was going on. I just see him, I just see him flipping some pasta all the time for you. It's fair. He's a good chef, but <laughs> even if he weren't good, I won't tell him. So, uh, so yeah, no, he was good. He um, yeah, he, he, he helped both of us out. To be fair, so I think he he used to stay in hotels. So he'd like stay in hotels and then go back to Northampton and so on. But like when I became like on my own, then um, it, it was perfect for us. We'd sit, have coffee and then he'd go back up, bed, train, coffee, cook, bed. So it was just, it was perfect for both He seems to have that bit of chef's mentality, like a little bit of Gordon Ramsay anger in him, isn't he? So you never go near him when he's in the kitchen. Christ. <laughs> you need any help? No. But you expect him to clean up after him. That's sure. fair enough, and it's it for tat. You, he does a cooker, you do the cleaning. Yeah, the mess, you have to tidy up. But he never tidied up, so I didn't even like to say. I was his little bitch, I never argued with him. I do all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you, mate. So, yeah, that FA Cup run, Sean Cummins gets the winner, and then um, it was a spectacular cup run that ended spectacularly at top of the Motspur. Let's talk a little bit about they were good then, mate, weren't they? Like, different level. I remember... Coop snacked Harry Kane early on, thinking, decent, he's off, fantastic, well done, Coop's pattern about. Then they brought on Sun. Like, he is, he don't get enough credit, that guy. He is incredible. Like, non-stop running, his pace, his, that, like, he's just unreal. Uh, yeah, I just remember their fullbacks being more or less wide strikers. They, were, they never defended, like, we couldn't get out. Um, Trippier and Davis played. And mm. then they had, like, uh, the Tongan and I can't remember who else was centre half, and they were just Rolls Royces, all of them. They were they were like different level. But that was another time you're thinking, Christ, that we're getting absolutely hammered here, but the fans never stopped, never, never stopped. And that was what I'm going back to as they shut the sort like the ability might not have been there that day, but they, they saw the effort, and you know they could never question us for that. And I remember looking back five zip and. Fans are still cheering us, and it, <laughs> thinking, right, let's not get it to six at least, and let's keep going. But, um, but yeah, up there, but um, enjoyable in a weird way. Yeah, I bet. Well, I, I think the worry, me personally, I was thinking we've been absolutely spanked here. I hope it doesn't derail us and knock us off our form on the league, which it didn't, luckily. And as you say, we made the playoffs on the last day. Just talk about what a day, what a, <laughs> what a nervy day, topsy turvy that was. Bristol Rovers away. Seventh, I think we was before going into it. Yeah. Would you remember so that day? I don't remember much of the game. I, just, I think they they went up and then I think it was like back and forth like a tennis game. Like and then um, Hutchie scored the header at the end, and then it, it, it was just like one of them. We used to say like wave after wave, just wave after wave kept coming at us, kept coming at us, and we just clear it, and then hopefully Gregs and Morrow would get it and nick a goal, and then. Then they game it up and out, and it'd be happy days. But I just seem to remember. I think the wind were blowing that game. It was a horrible game, but it was one of them. I showed our character again. That we just took, we wanted to win at all costs, and obviously we knew what were at the end of it. We had we were in our hands, win the game, and we, we were off to win, well, off through the playoffs. Mm. Um, so it had been no worse of time to lose. To be fair, like away at Bristol, long ass journey home, so close. Um, you know, in potentially getting to Wembley, um, and for it to, but luckily, 
uh, puts popped up with his big head and, and, and scored, so it was all right. What's he like, Hutchinson, as a, as a teammate? Do you know what? He's a quiet lad. He's a quiet lad, but yeah, he'll, uh, it fits like bits and starts. He'll, like the, uh, he'll have a, an outburst of humour. You think, where the, where, where's that come from? Are you all right? <laughs> Uh, but then he'd be quiet, uh, professional guy. Um, in a yeah. But to be fair, when he came, he was kind of like, we're all prattling about me and Greg's and we're looking at us going, stretching, what are you doing, lad? What, what's that all about? Come on, have a laugh with us. Let's move some physio beds or, you know, fill some of the water or something like that. But, um, but no, I can say, I, I think when you go to Millwall, you, you go in with this, mindset oh let's be serious and whatever um and i think you have to come out of your shell you have to come out of your shell and so show some character mm. um but at the same time like you're there to do a job um and obviously it's different now probably with uh Rowett in charge but we had the gaffer there who was happy days you know have a laugh but as soon as you're on the training pitch there's only messing about and you know he's, he's the boss you, you, mm. you do what he um but it's- Jimmy, I was, I was going to ask you about Jimmy Abdu. What was he like, Jimmy, as a, as a character? Jimmy was another quiet lad, but um, it, what a machine. Like he, he, we, um, pre, pre-season, we'd obviously go to Portugal, and it was like, I think it was Ramadan that time. So he'd never eat during the day, but he'd train like unbelievable. He didn't even drink. You'd see the guy, and you're thinking, we're, we're knackered here. And he was just going back and forth. And then, like, on an evening, he'd eat. He would, like, temperatures of 30, 35. And, and he, like, we're guzzling water down, like, dying. And he's just chilled. Uh, but, yeah, he was quiet. Soon training finished, he'd do his extra bits and he'd be gone. Uh, but, to be fair, the back end of that season, we got promoted. He was kind of... Oh, frozen out, but he weren't involved. But then he was the one who played. I'm sure he played away at Bristol, um, mm. and played in all the playoff games and in the final. Mm. Um, so just how important he was for us. Yeah, exactly that. Um, yeah, he did come in. I think, I think Thompson. I think he, we we started to have a little bit of a dodgy run of results, and I think the gaffer dropped Tomo out and, and brought Jimmy in for a bit of experience. So we got it over the line, and then we face a club you'd like to join in in the playoffs. Scumful, nil nil at home. Not not the most um, memorable game. Three one, uh, no, sorry, three two. I'll just drop one in the end. Three two at, uh, at their place. Another great day. The front two were firing again. Yeah, which, which that, was, that we, day. Yeah, we knew that if we, as long as we didn't lose at the den, it, it was okay because we knew they'd have to come at us. And yeah. we had players then that on the counter attack, we were always going to cut teams up. And then as soon as we got the first goal, and then they had to come at us again. Yeah, two nil, and then. Was it three one? It finished off. So it was. Um, I don't want to say a comfortable game, but yeah, again, arrogance. We knew we were going to beat them, mm. uh, and it's the same with the final. We we knew that the gaffer told us how the game was going to go. Bradford are going to have the possession. They're going to look easy on the eye, and we were always going to nick it. Or not nick it. That sounds bad. We were always going to beat them. Um, I mean, obviously you'll love it. Jordan pulled off a fine save. Um, in the in the first half, which was a good save and kept us in it, but as long as we kept a clean sheet, um, with them two up top and the the delivery and the balls they got, um, we were always a threat. Mm. Was it going into that final? Was it were you thinking, probably we just literally cannot lose this off after last season? Because I got the feeling, you know, we went down first uh, under Harris. It wasn't really his fault. We went down under him to to go back first time of asking so close. I've, I've always felt, you know, if he didn't get the second season, it could have been a time for, for a change-up, you know? Exactly, and I, I think we knew that. There, there was that that pressure, not only that we put on ourselves, but from the fans. We knew that we were so close the first time with the gaffer, losing the final. If we didn't get to the final and go up, you know, things could have changed throughout the whole club, I think. I think that, you know, it was a time where we had to kick on. Um and like I said, there was no chance we were losing. Like, it sounds stupid. I don't know about the first time at Barnsley, but the party was organised. We knew where we were going afterwards. It was just, it was set up. We knew we, knew we were going to win. I've got the feeling, so when we snuck in on the last day, 
uh, sort of literally at the last minute of Washington's header, got in the playoffs from like not really being you no know, seventh, not really being in contention, to thinking, do you know what? This could possibly now just maybe it's meant to be for us this year. It did happen. What was the feeling? So around the game, uh, Jordan Archer makes a great save in the first half. Jeb Wallace then makes, I'm sure Jeb missed a sitter in the second. What was what was the gaffer saying at half time? Just more of the same or? Yeah, more of the same. Like I said, we we knew we knew the game plan. We knew they were going to have the ball, and we knew that, especially in our Jed, even that letter today, get the ball to him, get it down, and get the balls in the box. Um, because they, Bradford played with two high fullbacks, so we knew the space was down there, um, and it was just the fact of taking one of our chances. And thankfully, Morrow scored late on, and they I said they, they had one chance afterwards where their fullback should have squared it and blew it over the top. But there wasn't enough time for them to score after that. So it was happy days. But um, the gap, that's one thing the gaffer and livers, they did so much work behind the scenes of how they play, the, the opponents play and how they wanted us to play. Um, and that, like, listening from things and looking back, like, middle fans were like, oh, we're going direct and we're doing this and we're doing that. But, our game plan never changed. It was get the ball tomorrow and play in the final third. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh, fantastic. The gaffer, you know, he knows what he's doing. When it didn't work at all, we just lump it. It weren't the case. We knew to get the balls in the area. Greg's and Morrow were the best in the league. So there's no point in saying me and Hutch fanning about with it at the back. We need to get the ball to the people who can do the damage. So yeah. we get the ball to them. And it was play from there. Always squeeze in and, and play in the final third. So, to be fair, I watched Millwall the other night and they seemed to have changed the style a little bit with Woods and Willow sitting there spraying the ball about. But even so, they've still got uh, Smudger up there who, you know, they get the ball to him and Jed's playing off him, Jed's getting the balls in. So, it's system, style, but more or less it's all the same anyway. Would you remember the goal, Morrison's goal? I remember looking back at the board thinking, right, they ain't got enough time, well, we can hang on here. And thinking, that's a long way to run to celebrate with him so he can go on his jacks. So, um, so yeah. It should, it, in football match, I don't remember much about him. It's just only afterwards that you think, wow, decent that. But, um, yeah. Looking back, obviously seeing it. I bet you really, don't much of the. Uh, I bet you don't remember much of the night either, dear celebrations. You know what? It's, it sounds stupid. One of the worst nights ever. So after the game, me and Morrow got drug tested. So I couldn't even go in the change room to celebrate. Got dragged into the drugs room. Couldn't pee. So they're then bringing us drinks and bottles of beer to try and get us to pee. All the celebrations are over. Go upstairs. Then get kicked on the bus. Had no food. I was. St- Starving, headache, everything. So then we're driving through London, traffic's a mental. I said, went to the front of the bus and drive, I have to get off here. Me and Cooks got off, ran to, I think it was McDonald's, got some food, and I thought, shit, how are we going to get back here? No taxis would pick us up. So we got on the Boris bikes. So then we're on the <laughs> Boris bikes, driving through London, trying to get to, I think it was Tower Bridge, where the hotel, where the party was. But I didn't realise on these bikes, you actually have to leave them at like a bike station. I just thought you left them anywhere. Couldn't find one of these bike stations. My quads are cramping up. Finally found it. And then, yeah, got to the hotel. I had a couple of drinks and I was just knackered. So I went on. So you played. Hang on. So you played a one, got promoted. Then you've been drug tested. Then you've got on the coach. You're so hungry. You and Coops have jumped off the coach, but didn't say wait for us. You've got on Boris bikes after a McDonald's and winning the player final. Yeah. <laughs> But because all the food in the change room, the lads had, had eaten because we had taken so long to pee, so there was nothing left. So I was starving. starving. Was, you in, um, was you in suits or in your Millwall tracksuits? I in the Millwall tracksuits. I think he made the, like, the press, some busy guests taking a photo of us, and there's like <laughs> me, me and Coops I mean, getting on Boris bikes driving through London. <laughs> Him on the phone trying to find out where we're going. We had no Scooby idea. <laughs> You're a northern down south, you can't be that far. It must be around the corner. Yeah. Exactly. Follow that big thing over there. <laughs> Classic. So we're promoted. Um, and then I'm pretty sure, because I remember covering it in a show, pre season, did you do your cruise shirt? No, so I played. So we, um, <laughs> we yeah, we've done the pre season. And then I remember the first game, Forest away, the gaffer came up to me and went, 
Once that coops a hutch, I'm thinking, bang, yeah. are they? Are you joking or what? <laughs> I, and it, so I then obviously um, weren't too pleased. And then, um, so I was on the bench for that. And then I think it was Coops got injured in the cup game. So then I got my run. I played like, I think it was 10 games and then did my cruise um against Barnsley at home. But somehow played the game. So I did it like 20 minutes into the game and then played the game. Um, and it was funny because afterwards we had the international break. So the gaffer gives us a few days off usually. So I booked to go to uh, Disneyland Paris with the missus and kids. So they were down now thinking, I hope my knee's all right because I've got this holiday planned. I, I do not want to miss this. So after the game, I saw the physio and it was just stiff. He's like, it would be all right. You just tweak something, you'll be fine. So got the train to, Dis- to Paris and um, walking around Disneyland, I'm saying to my missus, my knee, I can't bend it, stiff as all. So I walk up. So we got there on the Sunday, walk up on the Monday and that, like my knee, I couldn't move at all. So I rang the physio and said, listen, I'm not going to be able to train on Wednesday. And the gaffer had a thing that if you don't train on Wednesday after being been off for a few days, you're getting fined big time. So I'm thinking, tight Northerner, I don't want to be paying cash for this. So um, he said, well, ring the gaffer and see what he says. So I rang the gaffer and said, look, gaffer, I know your policy of like, if you're injured, you need to be in, but I'm in Paris, my knee's stiff. I'm probably won't be able to train on Wednesday. He went, all right. So he rang the physio, rang me back and says, get a flight back, Byron. So <laughs> I lasted 18 hours in Paris, uh, came back, and luckily it was good that um, they got me scanned the following day and then I was off so that was on the Tuesday and I got operated on on the on the Thursday yeah I remember you that for a long old time mate wouldn't you how, how did that feel being after you know one champ, obviously one season in the championship with Yeovil come to me and to stand the championship relegated get back and then 10 games and get injured was it like fuck am I ever going to get a good run in the, in the champion or what do you know what I mean yeah it was a nightmare to be fair um, but it, it was crazy that, um, it, in a weird way, it was a challenge. I had um, Paul, the physio there, Bloomy, um, and the lads were fantastic as well. It sounds stupid because the lads were doing well as well, mm. which I'm not going to say it, it was easier but harder in a selfish way because you're thinking, shit, I, I should be involved in that. Um, but then the lads were buzzing about and that, that helped me as well. It was like a thing like, I want to get back, I need to get back. Uh, mm. I think looking back that there was maybe two days when I had like bad days um, and Bloomy was fantastic and just like, eased off me and didn't work but there were, there were steps throughout the process of what I needed to do of how to get back and, and the knees have been fine ever since touch wood. Yeah, so I, you know, you you always seem to be a character down there obviously you're a character in a random dressing room so I was thinking, you know, if, you, if you're injured and the team are doing shit that's probably difficult in a sense because you want to get back to play. When they're doing so well, is it like, and I know you always will try to be part of it, but you can't completely be part of it, can you? We go on a 17-game unbeaten run, Tim Cale comes back to the club. Yeah. Can fuck me, I just want to get back out there bad. It was. And Jim, that's a good thing. The gaffer, I think he saw that and that's why he made sure, like I'd go to games and he'd give me my time off to, to you know, to to refresh and so I came back it weren't like a slog of being in every day like I was in the gym for months just looking at the same walls like mm. doing my, and seeing the lads out training thinking Christ I'd do anything to be out there mm. and you don't realise until it's kind of taken away from you that you know <laughs> we, we don't have a bad life it's not too bad um, and you, you do take it for granted like it probably every job that you know you, until it's taken away but um yeah, the gaffer was top draw with me. He'd, he'd, he'd say to me, like, you're coming along. All right, then, no problem. And he, he'd keep me in part, like, feel part of it. Um, but it was tough, like you said. They're doing well, you want to be involved. But you, you don't want them to do bad, but then you're thinking, well, if they do bad, then when I come back, I'll get in. And it, it's just a, it's a complete head mess. Yeah, what... Um... What sort of... Again, it might be difficult for one for you to scope, like Kale coming back to the club. Because, obviously, he came back to the club and he did... We got the sense as fans, it wasn't really, he didn't play a lot, but just the effect he had on the dressing room, we just seemed to, you know, go up a level when he came back. Um, he did. Obviously, he didn't have a, a negative effect. He, but the lads were flying at that time, so the whole camp was buzzing. Um, um, but like now, so like, 
his advice, he, he was great. Like Tom or again, Christ, he walked around with constant hard on with Timmy. You know? He was like <laughs> <laughs> doing moral or my chef, Tom or Timmy's playing a personal assistant, man. He was carrying everything. You're right, Tim, got a cup of tea? Uh, yeah, everything. Like, uh, no, but he was good around, but like you say, he didn't have the impact on the pitch. Mm. Uh, think everyone thought he was going to have when he came back because the team were flying he couldn't get in the team it weren't a fact that and do you know what the, fair play to the gaffer as well for that because he brought a legend from Millwall back mm. who, who he, the gaffer could have folded and you know thrown him in but he, he was loyal to the lads who were doing well um, obviously he came in he gave the club another boost to kick on which he did the fans were buzzing and um, and yeah, he, it's just, I think the main impact he had was in training where he, he even at his age, what were you like, 38 then or something like that? Right. He, he trained 100%. There was like, you saw, I remember him coming on as a sub and topping. In fact, he got a ban from it, I think. Topping it, it, it used to come on and just, just go through someone straight away for some reason. If you're allowed to bet, I'd definitely bet on him getting a yellow card. You'd, you'd have made a fortune off him. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, he, he was around the, on the training pitch, especially for the young lads. He was, you know, they'd see him come in and how he trained and he was definitely a, a positive around the training pitch. Here's a, a random question for you. Just thinking about Tomo and Kale and Harris. If there was, they both had their cars there, they both needed their cars clean, but there was only one bucket and one sponge. Who, who's, whose car would Tomo clean? He'd probably, <laughs> probably clean the gaffers and lick Timmy's. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> no, I definitely do the gaffers. Yeah, 100%. Oh, brilliant. Let's talk about some um, other other players in that squad around that time. Um, just again, I'd just like to know like what they were like personally as as, as people. James Meredith, he, he had a brilliant first season for us. Flying. He, um, <laughs> that's a weird one because we speak to him. Meza, did you know you were coming to Millwall like um, after the final? And he, yeah, he knew he was coming. So, and Morrow scored the back four, so I don't know if what's happened there. Um, but no, yeah, he was another one who. Um, he, do you know what? On a night out, night outs when you see people come 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 into themselves, he uh, he was quiet, a bit like much quiet in the gym doing his stretches, whatever else. Um, and and yeah, he, which is you get that with lads. There's like there's. Nuggets in the training pitch, or there's people who you know come in to work and then they go home and 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 that's them. And I'd say, Mesa, that he were a professional, came in, did his work. Uh, like I said, first season, he was he was flying. Was he well, was he quite lively? Not out, yeah. He's the inner animal come out. I, th- I think it's when they're quite around the ground that you see a, a change as such. Yeah, so um, yeah, we had some good Christmas dues. I'd say he was another great player in that in that um, run. Was uh, Ben Marshall? Yeah, great lad. Great, he was great fine lad. the first season when he when he came to us. The talent he has is a joke. Um, but obviously, he's had a few promotions as well, and it's a shame to see him not playing now. He, he should definitely be playing uh, championship, if not higher. His ability is a joke. He like. His right foot, you'd see him chopping and, and whip the balls in. Um, and, yeah, he, he came in, obviously kept Aiden out of the team. Aiden couldn't come in. Aiden was saying to me, Brian, what can I do? Well, you can't do all, Paul, unless you're going to top Marshy in training because <laughs> he, he is on fire. Um, yeah, and like I say, it is a shame seeing Marshy not play, but he definitely should be playing. Yeah, definitely. What about um, your, old, your old Northern buddy, Gregors? Yeah. Top lad, top top lad, um, and he'd be the first to admit he, he didn't want to leave Millwall. It's just the opportunity to go to Stoke was was too good. Looking back, obviously they're in deep shit, like but um, but his age, the, the the deal, and obviously closer to home was was major factors. Um, and yeah, he's just a top guy, top top lad. That season, you didn't play again, did you? That season, he was um, out for a very long time. Yeah, uh, you, you got a new contract in the summer, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I got a contract. Um, and to be fair, the gap when I was doing it, I was like, I wanted to get back playing. I wanted to play. Um, and it's different to when you're injured. 
and you're not playing. So when you're fit and you, you, you're like eager to get in there. So I did the pre-season. The, the thing was always to be ready for pre-season. Um, like I was, I didn't have a summer. I was down south uh, in South End with the uh, fitness guy doing weeks of training with him. Uh, so came back, felt good. Um, and then I got my chap, I played West Brom away, played like what, two, three games. I thought decent, cracked it, but then uh, Hutch came fit and it was just one of them things that, that I just thought I'm never going to get a crack. Hutch and Coots were um, the gaffer's choice at that time, fair play. And um, mm. then it's like, you fit, I'm away from home. It's, it's... Did you feel that you, because um, when you came back from, from fitness, to fitness, sorry, I just thought, oh, he's going to get back in, but you didn't see the play as much, and I just thought maybe it hadn't been the same for you. Like, you know, your injury hadn't been the same to allow you to play at that level, but you, you didn't think that was the case? No, no, because like I said, I came back, played West Brom away, I think we drew, played another one, played against Sheffield, and obviously I'm going to say I felt all right, but like I said, the it, it's football. It, you mm. know, it's, it's um, people come, people go, and, and that's how it is. Well, it's a tough. We'll say it's, it's definitely a tough one to crack with um, Cooper because he's played on like 117 games straight. I don't think he's missed a game since then. So, was, um, like, yeah, like I, can like I can't watch the football without fans and all that shit. It's just it's like pre-season game. It's pissing me off. It's yeah, it's annoying, isn't it? Um, what was it like, big coops. No, he, he is one of the best, one of the strangest, craziest, like thickest. But what what a lad! He's uh, he's weird seeing him on a pitch. He's like got a voice now. He shouts at people. I, I couldn't take him serious if he shouted at me. I'd be like, "Who shut the gut, man? Like, what are you doing?" But um, but yeah, he a great lad. It, like him, George Savile and Matt Beavers are up there with the the like. They're just the non-stop, non-stop at all. Like you won't think it recoups, but like crazy kids, that's what they are, kids. But I love it, the, the top, top guys. I wouldn't have thought that of Savile. I've, I have heard that Cooper's really like, it's funny because he's he's a lovely, lovely fella, but he's a bit dopey as well, so it just makes him really funny. I think nice, he's not a bit dopey, he's dopey. But, <laughs> you know, he he's like, he, he's not, he's actually, he's thick. He, him and Aiden are up there with the two thickest I've been with. But, uh, yeah. They're just good lads. Um, Sav is Sav's funny. Sav is Sav's probably the funniest. He's he's a great lad. Posh George, funny. yeah. Yeah, George. I can see you won't think he's all like posh how he talks and whatever else. I think that adds to it. Um, but no, George is George is a different animal to be fair. So what happens? You, you can't. You know, you're struggling to get back in after your long term injury. Coops and Hutch are settled. Did you then go to go to the gaffer and say, I think it's time, or the, how did that come about, the move to, to Scunthorpe? We kind of had a thing where we spoke and said, like, we'd speak um, around the January transfer window um, and said, yeah. So I just went to him and said, look, gaffer, this is available. Um, and he was top draw. So it was kind of a, not a written agreement, but a verbal agreement. And like I said, I had a good relationship with the gaffer where mm. I him, he trusted me. So it was, it was happy days. He was good to his word. You seem like you speak. You got not, you know not a bad word to say about Harris. Seemed like he was very good for oh, your man management wise. Yeah, we. Uh, I think what I like is like don't get me wrong. We had some runnings, but it was never personal. It was always for the good of the team, or you know what I mean. I don't think he wanted shrinking violence. He wanted people to chirp up as long as you you weren't talking shit and going against him. Mm. Um, and. I think that they definitely what well definitely for I speak from me. I respected him. So um yeah, we had a good relationship and even like um, we played Cardiff in the cup, uh at Carlisle. Uh, and and I went into his office afterwards, sat down, had a drink with him in Livers, so so yeah, it's been a good relationship. That was good to hear, mate. So hundred and nine games in five years, eight goals. I meant to ask you about this earlier. I'm sure I'm gonna be scoring two in one game at the den. Should have had an hat-trick, Oldham. So, yeah, scored the two and the ball bounced to me. And the guys pulled me back and I'm leaning back and I booted it over the crossbar. It was harder to miss, to be fair. So, I don't even remember the two goals, I just remember that miss. I can't, I can't say, but, you know, I enjoy my time so much that I can't, can't think of a bad time. There's so many 
good things that happened when we were there. Like you said, the cup runs, the promotion, like stupid things. I remember like um, very away before we got out on the pitch, the fans are battling, and then we play in and playing nil nil at half time, and then they're beating us two nil, and we go on and win three two. There's like stupid games that pop up in your head, and you think, you know, it was a, a good good time. Mm, that, mate, that was up. That was up there. One of the greatest white days ever. That's when Aiden scored the win and jumped in with our fans, isn't it? Well, I jacked it. I jumped over it. Still call myself Zlatan for that. <laughs> he said, jacked it, jumped over it. He slid in. The best thing was he only got nicked that day. He jumped in with the fans. The police didn't realise he was a player. He's got his arm up his back. They're trying to lead him out. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Well, you, you, you'll go down in mule folklore for, for doing that. And then Coops, Coops done the same thing, didn't he? I think you'd gone by then, but Coops did the same thing at. Chef, you a couple of years later jumped in with the fans. He's probably looking for his Boris bikes. It was at Bramall Lane, wasn't it? That was at Bramall Lane, yeah. It was at Bramall Lane. Yeah, I think I was there watching that game. I used to see you quite a lot anyway. I, I, I saw you at Sheffield Wednesday. You always used to get in with our fans, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Northern games, it was sweet. I try and get there. Best one was the Leeds one when um, it was like 4 3 or 3 2 at Ellen Road. That was a, a good game. I remember going down with the missus for it. She went to a cup of tea at half time. I'm thinking, come on, I'm undercover. I got there early, chilled out, got there, <laughs> get down there, I'm like a lamp post sticking out, beaming. So then, then, all the fans, then the chant's coming, and then no word of a lie, about 15 pints, 15 cups of tea come to me. I'm saying to the missus, hey, you are, darling, how many teas do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone want to buy you a drink? Yeah, it was good crap. I was seeing with the fans, you're there, uh, and... It's good to see that, like, obviously you're playing there, but the passion from them and what's actually being said. Because uh, as players, you think, oh, fans, are, they're all opinionated, they don't know nothing. But, <laughs> you know, there's actually, I'll say a few fans that actually know what they're talking about. Um, it's just interesting to be in there. So the thing is, mate, they do love, it's like, you know, when Neil Harris said, just, just you know, just produce from, just give it your all and they'll love you. But if you get them from an away game as well, that's it, you'll, uh, you'll be forever yeah. loved. For that, they love that. So, go, see, he's one of us, he gets in with us. Well, he was, he, Not so afraid to get in the mix. There was never bought any boring games. I did an interview as well the other day where they were saying about, oh, in fact, it was before the Charlton game or the local derby. We all have local derbies with Leeds. They have local derbies all over the gap. There's not, it's not like just Charlton or playing whoever else in London. Every single game, like, there seems to be some rivalry with them. So, they were just, it was just. Away games were just unreal, and then you'd take them to the den, and it was even better. If you could pick, I know it'd probably be difficult, if you could pick one standout memory from your time at the club, what do you think it would be? Obvious one's a final, but like for me, it's funny, where I am in, like outside Leeds, I'm hated, man. Millwall, ex Millwall player, a Man United fan, can't go down any worse around my neck of the woods with Leeds fans. So, but we beat Leeds at home 2-0. I think it was 2-0. Um, and that was just an unreal day. Like, for me personally, it was class. I was getting grief before the game. Um, like, people messaging me or whatever. And then afterwards, my phone's just silent. I was buzzing. Um, but there's a story for you before. So, after that, so my dad's a Leeds fan. But for, it was crazy. For Millwall, he turned into a Millwall fan. Didn't care about Leeds afterwards. So, we went out for some food afterwards. Um, and I just wrote on um, my Facebook, oh, great day and great evening. And at that time, I was um, building out my house. So um, I was getting some windows off a Leeds fan. Cancelled my order. <laughs> Cancelled my window order. <coughs> just because I'd wrote that comment. My missus rings me the next morning going, Biden, he's cancelled the order. What are we going to do? We've got no windows for the house. And honestly, cancelled it. Won't, won't deal with me. Fudge. No, nah, didn't budget at all. He's a tit anyway. Uh, yeah, so I had to find another window company to uh, supply me the windows. But yeah. So, oh, mate, I bet you're having a stinker now this year, though, aren't you? You're listening to it all? I can't handle it, honestly. It's bad, bad times. I watched them against Fulham Leeds, and I'm thinking, Fulham will do them here. Fulham look pony. Leeds mm. smash. Then you think Leeds draw to uh, Luton. Happy days. They're not going to bottle it again. Nah, then... Um, it's, a, it's a late one yesterday, didn't I? I think it's going to be them and Brentford to go up, personally. I agree, yeah, Brentford. Seems yeah, to go good up. Brentford. Could you give us, um, give, us, give, us a, give us a story or two from an inside the dressing room? One you can share. 
Um, a training ground story or a dressing dressing room stories. Um, so sensible one is like so I'd say how close the lads were. We used to have a Thursday club, always in Bromley. Go to Starbucks, go to the bookies, put a few horse, uh, bets on the horses. Starbucks bookies back and forth, and then we'd go to um, the Turkish restaurant have it and all of us have food there so that's like a boring story but that's how close we were we were always together always go for food whatever else plenty of stories where um cars have been moved so tomo used to he used to try and cheat um with moro on me so he used to try and come in with our little group so a number of times moro's nicked his car put it in bromley and left his keys somewhere and like tomo would come out of train and be like Where's the car? And no one would tell him. Uh, he'd be searching all over the gap, spitting feathers he was. Um, <laughs> most of the story I can't say, but, um, but yeah, he was just, and like I said, the little clicks, there was Marlon, Fred, and Aiden, you'd see them three together. And, you know, they were just like little kids just messing about, not even how funny, but like closing showers and Ice bath, and then there'd be retaliation. Jordan, Morrow and Jordan had a hate-hate relationship. So they, they battle all the time, them two. Morrow did something to Jordan's gear. I think he threw it in the ice bath. Um, and Morrow got a delivery of boots. Jordan went into the kitchen area, got a massive bottle of bolognese sauce, poured it in all over Morrow's boots, which were white boots as well. <laughs> Picked it all back up and left it there for Morrow to find. Um, no. Morrow's, I don't even know if he got it back. He said to this day he was going to get a snake and put it in his car, but I, I think he bottled it Morrow. Is that actually like a little bit of a hate, hate, serious hate, hate, that one? Nah, nah, nah. I always used to say it was. I used to wind oh. up. Morrow used to always try and dink Jordan. And every keeper, they don't like to be dinked. But Morrow would always pull off the dink on Jordan. And then Jordan would try and chase after him, but could never catch him. But, uh, no. Well, he didn't, want... Hang on, he didn't like letting goals in. <laughs> <laughs> He won the final for us. He saved us that year. <laughs> oh yeah, that one save. I remember. Um, so if you could go, if you could have one night out, I was asked this question at the end. If you could have a night out tomorrow with three of your ex-team Millwall mates, who, who's the three you're taking with you for a night out? Have to be Morrow, uh, Beeves. Um, I'm going to say a few actually. Chris Taylor. Well, up to five. Bump up to five. Right, so Oren, Reeves, Chris Taylor, Greggs, and Sean Williams. Let's talk about Williams. I ain't spoke about him. I love Williams. Yeah. I'll get yeah. so much shit for, like, say, go, you know, what, what are you up to? Like, why are you, I just think he's brilliant. What's a player? Yeah, he's um, probably the most talented, gifted player I've played with. He's um, so composed on the ball. Not like, and do you know what his stats as well for running and whatever else? He's high up there. Mm. Like the distance he covers, um, but he's just he's, he's a magician, he's a genius on the ball. He sees mm. passes, um, like you, you don't even see until the ball's there, uh, and he seems to be getting better and better. Uh, like I'm speaking to him the other day, and he's, he's enjoying life there, he's enjoying getting on the ball more with that woods in midfield. Um, and he's kind of like the quarterback, isn't he? He's dictating play at the minute. Yeah, I agree, mate. He, he looks he, so like it's good you said that about his stats for running and stuff because. He looks slow almost on the pitch, but he's not. He just buys time, and he's yeah. the, the fact that he looks slow and he's still got so much time on the ball just shows what a good player he is. His positional sense and things like that, you know. It's exactly that, and even like pre-season, he's up there. He's he's, he's a fit lad. Uh, yeah. You see, if he's chasing after, say, Fred, for instance, when in training, he ain't going to catch Fred. But um, yeah, he he was always always up there with the stats, distance covered, even his high-speed running. Um, and with a ball, you can't fault him. I've got to give a shout out to Marlon. That guy's a genius. Marlon, if he ain't playing the Premiership in two years, there's, there's something wrong with him. He, he is unbelievable, the kid. Yeah. What, just all round game and training attitude? Um, when I were there, I'm not saying bad attitude, but like I was saying about Shawnee Cummins, just chilled out. But, oh, no, I mean good attitude. Yeah, he's got like, yeah, good yeah, attitude yeah. towards everything. I don't even, yeah, you, I couldn't question his attitude. He's just, he's just a talented lad. And I think, sounds stupid, 
he, he gets caught out the odd time when he's he's so relaxed and the game's too easy for him. If he comes up against, uh, he, we know it's going to be a tough game, a, a good winger or whatever. You'll see him rise, he's get, like raise his game again. Mm. He, he has to be playing the Premiership so has to. Well, that'll be that'll be our expense, but um, so he's, he's been around the club a long time. And uh, yeah, he's, he's doing very well. He's, he's definitely improved defensively under Rowett as well, yeah. which was a big thing. I love him. I love him bombing on and getting forward. But um, to, to to sort of see as a right back or right wing back, you've got to be able to defend as well. And he's massively improved on that this season. You said that um, Sean Williams is a good trainer. Who's, who's, who's some bad trainers you trained with at Millwall? Moro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say that, yeah. He, he was yeah. He um, his thing was that as long as I do well on a Saturday, fair play. Um, I've seen a bad training, he didn't sack it off or anything, but he just, he won't want to get injured, he won't want to get a strain. And I think that's sure, I don't, I don't think he missed many games, um, but he'd always be there on a, on a Saturday. Um, bad trainers. Brilliant. Listen, mate, I've really enjoyed it. Thanks thanks for joining us today. It's been uh, it's been spot on. And uh, hopefully you can get in tomorrow for us. He might come on, you never know. Yeah, exactly. Top man, mate. Really enjoyed oh. having you at the club. Fans love Joe Morse. When you left, it is even more, you know, yes, he's left as a player, but what a character around the place. So you say you're definitely remembered fondly by the fans. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. I oh, definitely did. Every minute of it, top draw. Brilliant. Cheers, mate. Cheers, man.